<laughs> Welcome <laughs> to Double Confirm Show, Episode Three. Episode Two is on the cutting room floor in a disarray. <laughs> However, it may be salvaged and stuck up on the internet's just, just to <laughs> get it out of our system and to show the progression of how you too can make a podcast with very little to no knowledge of recording or podcasting. Completely right. <laughs> you just need to be motivated. Motivated. As, as long as you're motivated. <laughs> my gains. Anyway. Uh, but we have learned a lot. You have learned a lot about technology in yes. the last couple of weeks. Yes. This is Sound the, technology. Yeah. So welcome. Okay. Here we go. Technology. So... <laughs> Second episode, we're going to release it. I don't know if we're going to release it in order. <laughs> this is more like a performance art piece. We discussed this You're right. earlier exactly. this week exactly. over, over dinner, birthday yep. dinner. And uh, uh, Yes, excuse me, guys. It was Thomas's birthday. I like that. Two days ago. Oh, we had a fantastic oh, dinner. Very, thank yes. you for the invitation. Thank you for coming. And thank you for lovely Pauline for cooking. Mm. What did she call it? She called it the, the overcooked chicken which uh, was absolutely perfect yes but she, she likes to downplay her skills in the kitchen it's called uh, under promise over deliver oh, massively over deliver yeah that was fun yeah it was by really the time we arrived actually. Thomas was already j- drunk he had like no, four wasn't. whiskeys <laughs> he was on the floor oh, we were like, like what's going on two small whiskeys they just get in the mood <laughs> Nice. And nice. get the music levels. I have There's to drink a bit and listen to me. Like the music's not, you know, I spent, I got the lighting levels right. Yeah. I take like half an hour to prep the space. <laughs> Forget <laughs> about cooking. While Pauline's slaving in the kitchen <laughs> for the chicken. <laughs> make me feel bad. It was my birthday. It was your birthday. So I could do great. whatever I want. One of the best chocolate cakes I've had in a long time, by the way. Well, it thank was, you. It was very good. I want to thank Rohan for picking that up. Yeah, it was really from good. From the chalk farm. He got so a lot called? of abuse for, for that, but I thought it was really good. But she Pauline could. really, you know, it's like, my chicken's, she was like, my chicken's good, your cake is shit, basically. That's <laughs> what she said. <laughs> I was just like, really, Pauline? Yeah, she really should have her own cooking show. You know, she she's right in vain with the, the nasty, mean cook, cooking show she celebrities should. like What's-His-Face. Um, I've <laughs> I've no idea what's his what's his name, like uh, uh, Ramsey, R- Gordon Ramsey, Gordon Ramsey. Like what's it called? Hate Kitchen, I think it is. Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> what a monster! Can you imagine? Yeah, well, Pauline can have like... Hate Kitchen. I just coined it now. <laughs> it may start off. I don't know. It might be a little too violent for general oh, man. consumption. That show is terrible. Have you seen the one Hotel Hell? Have you seen Fire. Hotel Hell? Where yes. he goes into a hotel and he basically rips families apart. Is this Gordon Ramsay still? This is Gordon Ramsay, yeah. Bastard. It's terrible. Bastard. Absolute, you know, psychological trauma. Yeah. People love it. I'll tell you what I did watch, though, the other day on TV. Not on TV, on Netflix. Netflix. Which I thought was brilliant. I know we're going on a tangent. Dave Chappelle. Have you seen the new Dave Chappelle show? The new Netflix, Netflix specials? I haven't oh, seen it yet. Dude, it is brilliant. It is so good. He's got two episodes going. It's, it, it's the classic Dave Chappelle. Because obviously he's been off the scene for a while. Yeah? He's been yeah. out of the scene. So all these totally. new comedians have been coming up, like yeah. Ru- Kevin Hart. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's, he's brilliant. Yeah. But he, he rips into him. Absolutely <laughs> goes into totally Kevin Hart. Into but, like, just, I mean, obviously they're good mates. But yeah. he absolutely <laughs> tears him to bits. <laughs> so he's back there. He's back there. He's now, it's now between Kevin Hart and Dave Chappelle, I'm telling you. It's back brilliant. in his own. It's brilliant. He just needed some time off. He did. But and he, oh, man, he's back on form. I'd love to know how much they paid him for those shows. I think Netflix brought out the checkbook in a big way. So, Dave, congratulations. Congratulations, Dave. <laughs> We're big fans from way back. Tyrone Biggins. Biggums. Yeah, Joe Rogan. That was Joe Rogan's claim to fame. Joe Rogan? Exactly. Do you really? even know who he is? No, who the fuck's Joe Rogan? Who the fuck's Joe Rogan? Hold on, it, it rings a bell, but I'm trying to remember who Joe Rogan this was. This is like deja vu <laughs> from two weeks or whatever it was. Uh, when we were talking about this last, okay, Joe Rogan, comedian, <laughs> big bump up in success was when he hosted the show Fear Factor, oh, which that's yes. why it all ties in <laughs> yes. with 
uh, Chappelle, he was Dave Chappelle in the original series, uh, was spoofing <laughs> the Ty- Fear Factor. <laughs> with Tyrone Bingham. <laughs> which is funny that he was spoofing the show, you know, with crazy crack yeah, addict, yeah. like doing all kinds of crazy shit. But the funny thing yeah. is that he actually got the real host of the real show to be on his show, on the spoof show. So you had the real host on the spoof show. <laughs> Tell you what, we'll add a couple of clips, YouTube clips on there, because we found some old clips of him. Because nobody doing, can find these clips on their own. Doing that. Well, it took us a while. <laughs> I think they're ripped. I don't think anybody's getting paid for those clips. No. no <laughs> I think it's like handheld cameras. It's shaky video them. cam on a bad black and white TV set from... <laughs> Hopefully you won't get sued for putting those clips in the show notes. Shaky can. <laughs> hey, man, the shake adds another element of, like, artistic interpretation. Agreed. Therefore, Agreed. they have Agreed. some leg to stand on legally. Brilliant. But you were telling about something. What the hell are you telling about? It? Oh, this morning's yoga session. Yo, okay, on. so let's, let's go all the way back, yeah? I think it's from episode one already. Because oh, episode really? two, episode, yeah, episode one we were talking about Banu. Yes. Your yes. your um, yoga yes. teacher. And I was yes. pleased. You know, I've heard so much about this yes. guy. Because I was just back from India a few was, weeks before. That was episode one. Episode two, we're not going to spoil. But episode two, I'm like, yoga needs to save me, basically. So yoga needs to save Because your back was effed up. Because <laughs> we're cleaning up. We don't want to have an explicit rating. So you effed up your back. We sweared a lot in that second episode. I don't know why. I don't know. I was hungover. Yeah, you were that's a mess. Why, that's, that's but tonight why. you're today tonight. <laughs> T- tonight. Last yeah. night you were not I, out. I drinking. didn't have much. I didn't drink. Hold on. I had, I had, I had half a bo- half a bottle of wine. Not too bad. I didn't have much sleep. Though. I didn't drink. Just a half a bottle of wine. That's a total alcoholic anonymous. <laughs> that's that's like on. I don't have a problem. <laughs> I didn't drink. I just had half a bottle of wine. That's very French of you. So anyway, so Banu, getting back to that. So Merrick needed help because his back was effed up. Exactly. So Thomas basically gave me some free classes. To, Introduced um, you to my yoga studio. To the yoga studio. And to introduce classes. Banu. And I mean, I was hooked. Actually, in fact, I am hooked. And unfortunately, Banu is now away. He's away for a week. Give him a break. And everyone is freaking out. So anybody who follows <laughs> Banu everyone. is in panic mode. Their hair's on fire. You see them running down the streets of Singapore going, mm. please, where, <laughs> where the fuck is Banu? Slight exaggeration. We need Banu. To- there was panic at your at your Christmas dinner. I could sense it. Christmas everyone was- dinner. Is Christmas again already? No, sorry, your birthday, your birthday dinner. Half, just a half a bottle of wine. <laughs> Christmas dinner. It's April, man. <laughs> sorry, at your birthday dinner. It's like I mean, Christmas, everyone though. was like, what are we going to do? What class are we going to go to everyone. on Saturday? Yes, everyone was like, Barney's not here. What are we, <laughs> which class are we going to do this weekend? And me obviously being... Okay, so anyway. You're a novice. I checked out a couple of Barney's classes. I think three, two, two or three. Hooked. Yes. I also tested some other yoginis or yoga instructors at the studio. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not hooked. Mm-hmm. Um, not hooked. And now it's sort of... Back in Singapore, I thought, oh, I can't wait to have a session with Banu, um, and I'll do that before I sign up for my membership. Excellent again, choice. I'm sold, done and dusted. Excellent Banu's choice. not around, obviously. He's away. So the, the lady who's dealing with my membership says, um, yeah, yeah, we can do, you know, how about vinyasa at 9 o'clock? Mm-hmm. And this was literally two hours ago. <laughs> so I'm fresh out of a vinyasa hellhole. Which was absolutely <laughs> horrific. It was ab- and actually Thomas, um, what was his name again? What, like uh, Bihun. B- That's Bihun. his code name. So B- Bihun was the instructor. We want to incriminate anyone. And when I told Thomas I'm going to, sued. to to see Bihun, mm. actually, and Miss Manjeri also said that Pauline, lovely Pauline. Yeah, well, <laughs> said um, don't go to that class. Did we tell you that? You sent me a text. Yeah. Oh, good. You said. You should not go to that class. Oh, okay. And being the amateur person that I am, I thought, oh, that's easy. Come on. Like, it's just a bit of vinyasa. It's fine. You don't want to stand on the shoulders of giants is what you're saying. (laughs) You want to be starting from the the floor like, oh, what's fire? Oh, oh, I could wear these furs on my back. (laughs) This is great. I'm not freezing at night. You know, like, come on. Accept what we've achieved as a a, a race. Can I say race? (laughs) I it's got like racial species. overtones. Species. species. Thank you. We're getting <laughs> back to Homo erectus. <laughs> Homo sapiens. Okay. Mm. I'm on chapter three of that book. Audiobook. 
Yeah. <laughs> audio book. <laughs> the audio book. <laughs> pretty good. It's pretty good. You know, we'll get in that in a second. But first, got to unleash the Behoon <laughs> diatribe. So, diatribe. basically, <laughs> be- Behoon, I don't know. You just, I mean, everything is out of whack. There's everything. A, it's so a cult. My, my, there was definitely a cult, a cult there, but everyone's in Lululemon, sweating their ass off. I think he turned up the heat as well. Was it, was it a hot touch. yoga one? No, no. But he turned it up. Either he turned it up a little bit, or everyone's sweating their balls off. So by within twenty minutes, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going, this is fucked. Fucking not. I'm just like, no. Explicit. Sorry. We got the explicit I'm, rating. I can't do this. Yeah. Child pose. Mm. I'm just like, dude, mm, 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 like. Mm. I'm out of, you know, I just want to make sure I don't fuck something up. And I also want to make sure I'm in alignment. Yeah, well, we saw, we told and you don't And it was go. all happening so quickly. I'm like, dude, I don't want to push it like that. I mean, come on. Hey, man. Like we're do, you don't doing listen warrior to us. pose. We're doing this pose, that pose. You're bending legs over backwards. This is like supposed to be class number one or something. <laughs> What's that called, that thing? Oh, man. Scorpion. I was out of there. I was furious. Furious. Even. Furious. Well, Merrick didn't take our advice. <laughs> I knew this would be a catastrophe. I was hoping you just wouldn't hurt yourself. That was like the best case scenario would be he doesn't hurt himself. He gets out. He realizes yeah, we were himself. right. Yeah. And he just says, I'm not doing that again. No, no yeah, more yeah, behoom yeah, yeah, for us no more behoom. or me. Yeah, because he, he's got a cult. A lot of young young people, yeah. young women in particular, who kind of worship him mm. as a, this yoga um, quote-unquote master. Mm. Quote-unquote master. Yeah, why though? Oh, you know, that's a whole other subject what matter. I could I could opine on that <laughs> subject for Where does it come from? Because the technique's not there. He days. was not helping anyone on technique. Mm. It was way too quick. Like for in any sort of form, you do not go that quickly. You need to breathe mm. between your positions. Move with the breath. <laughs> I don't Move breathe like that. Breath. I'm sorry. I never took a Bihun class. Oh, you've never taken a Bihun? No, class? because Pauline told me she tried, and she told me what the, what it was all about, and I completely understood because I've been in classes yeah. similar to that, where the instructor is is a lot of ego and there's a lot of um, pushing people, and he yep. has a very high opinion of himself. Yeah, are we going to be sued for this? <laughs> and um, we've we've changed the names to protect the innocent and the guilty. <laughs> <laughs> so the names you have no idea who this is actually mm. but anyway. but code name Bihun yeah um, which is actually a type of noodle Chinese noodle you're right thin noodle <laughs> it's right. called a thin noodle it's a thin noodle Poly is it a Singaporean Bihun. noodle or is it a <sighs> Chinese noodle what's the difference it could be a Malay noodle Fair enough. <laughs> it could, it could Fair be enough. an Indonesian noodle. I don't know. I don't, my noodle history, <laughs> <laughs> my noodle knowledge is... This is where we need Pauline. Oh. oh. This is where we need Pauline. Yeah, she's troubled though. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm glad you didn't hurt yourself. Sorry, yeah. I just needed to... Because it is. It's pushed really fast, and there's not much correction. Nah, and uncomfortable. Um, but, but there's a lot of uh, devotion to the, to the leader, the yeah. great leader. <laughs> Like North Korea all over again. Completely. Um, which is another issue. Completely. Your friend Kim Jong un. My friend. <laughs> My mate. <laughs> Keeps trying to set up Jeez. missiles. He tried again just today. Lo- or yesterday. Really? Yeah. A lot yeah. of saber rattling. I saw rattling. the news. Saber rattling. That's my favorite. Saber expression. rattling. I use that all the time. And what's his name? Mr. Trump is not helping at but all. But we will right? finish about your yoga experience. I just want to make sure we close. No, the I, I think I think I feel better. Thank you for listening. Thomas. Do not go and Thank see you. no more. Thank you. That's a double negative. So I'll be signing up tomorrow. By the way, mm. I got a really good, good. deal. Good. But I, I said only Banu. I'm not, and she's like, why only Banu? I'm like, because it's only Banu. <laughs> like I'm sold. And if he leaves, I'm out of here. <laughs> Aria, you understand? <laughs> Banu has no idea becoming a star of the show. I'm putting this in the contract. Mm. If Banu leaves, we break the, yeah. the lease, the clause. Automatic. The contract. Dissolution <laughs> of the contract. Banu, yeah, done. Sold. All right, all right, check. Mm. All right, let me look at my notes. <laughs> is that it? I thought you were really going to go crazy. No, 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 no. That's no, as crazy no, as you get, I guess. Little, so yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Mm. But I did do a little trip to Japan last week. Oh, yeah. You're supposed to check in and Which give us a report from Japan. The report from Japan. So last it week. was actually very quick. It was uh, seven days. Um, arrived in on, um, I think it was Sunday night. 
I mean, what, what's there to say about Japan? The place is amazing. I love it. It's always, I mean, it's always amazing. The mm. food, mm. you know, the, everyone's so friendly when you meet them. Yeah. Everything's so organized. It's clean. The air is fresh. There's a certain freshness to the air in like Tokyo. And it's a big yes, city. Exactly. But it's this freshness to the air. And it's so clear. There's no pollution. Well, how do they do that? I don't know. <laughs> How do they do that? How do they do that? How do you guys do that? Very good. <laughs> Very emos- emotive, expressive. And everything. The, f- the fish is fresh. Mm. The air is fresh. Mm. The flowers are blooming. Mm. You know, a little that? breeze. Yeah. And at that I time of the mean. year, it was, when was it? So last week, there was like Spring. end of April. I missed the, um, mm. the what is cherry blossoms, sakuras. Sakura, sakura. It's okay. Still that freshness. Um, yeah, it was good. And so it was dinners, work, you know, and heavy, heavy party on Friday. Heavy party on Friday. What was the occasion? It was a disaster. Friday <laughs> nights in Tokyo. <laughs> was it a big group, small group? It started out with a big group. It was a work thing. Mm-hmm. It was really strange that you, they do a work thing on a Friday night. It's really strange. It feels like you have to stay behind. Yeah, but that's Japanese. That's part of the culture, though. But Japanese, no? Yeah, you have to spend at least 15 hours in the office every day. Um, Our company's a bit different. But that's why I thought they'd be a little bit more, yeah, a little bit more westernized. But anyway, so that went on until about, I think it was about 11. And then the group became smaller, you know, the... The crazy started the to come hearts. out. Yeah. The troublemakers. Um, Sai came out. You know Sai She's very well. She's a troublemaker. Well. Sai is a... Yes. So Sai is a... What's it? A third Filipino, third Dutch, third Japanese mix. Oh. So third, that's why third, she's so third, crazy. She's got three parents. She's got three, <laughs> three parents. That's yeah. very progressive. <laughs> because uh, you can only do that. It's only now they're starting that. <laughs> what's it? It's Sironol, Sironol Vaka Masumoto. It's yeah, I never couldn't. <laughs> you could never <laughs> say it. That's why I just say Sai. So she's ah, a bit crazy. Hang out a little sigh. bit. She's good fun. Mm. And her husband, Chris Duss, they now have a baby, two years old. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, they're looking tired. Oh. Sai. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that, but congratulations on the bundle of joy. <laughs> the bundle of joy. Yes. And then, then what happened? And then it, it was. Is that coffee like cooking your brain right now? Completely cooking. I'm like, brain. I see you. And you're, I mean, like, there's, <laughs> and everything's like, moving. It's this damn soundproofing material behind you with all the lines. Yeah. It, it's my eye can't focus. It's like it's swimming <laughs> in my. My eyes are swimming inside there. It's the bulletproof Sockets. coffee, guys. It's the bulletproof coffee. I'm actually getting sweats. Yeah, combined with the vinyasa and the s- and the coffee and the bihun, lack of sleep, the half ah, a bottle of wine, wine. <laughs> dude. You're, you're. I'm not hungover. Come you're on. out of control. It's so easy. Yeah, and there was a French group, you know. And once the French groups comes out, come when, out, you know, it's seven a.m. in the morning. You're crawling uh, out of this fucking uh, place, stinking uh, of cigarettes. Yeah, you feel great, right? Oh, like really, really oh, fresh. Like, yes. <laughs> Fresh air fresh in the air. morning. Yeah. yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. Were there any drunken salary men on the ground, like by the, you know, subways? Mm, no, I wasn't in that area. That's Rapongi. Rapongi, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Shibuya. Yeah. Shibuya. No, not Shibuya. Was it Shinjuku? Is that, Shinjuku. Yeah. I was in, I don't know where I was, man. Cool. I, I was, it was an underground tunnel. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, it's called Oath. You were in a mine shaft. Oath. <laughs> Oath. Yeah, that's the name of the club. But you don't know the neighborhood. It's if between you... Shibuya and Roppongi. Uh, Awayama, I think it's Awayama. called. Awayama. Yeah. Near Omate. It's actually Awayama Omate Tunnel. Sando. That's Awayama Tunnel. Awayama. Yeah, dodgy. So cool. my Saturday was an absolute write off. Um. I I don't do that anymore. Mm. And now I'm doing something else. Mm. Now instead of writing off my Saturday mornings after mm. a Friday binge, mm. I'm in the studio <laughs> recording. Recording audio gold. <laughs> I got to work on that. <laughs> I got to work on that kind of stuff. You know, more expressive with my voice. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. Voice over? Uh, voice over? Voice over, man. I want to become voice over, man. <laughs> Yeah. We need a jingle as well. Jingle. <laughs> jingle. <laughs> All right. We could jingle it. I'm getting a little bit jing- freaky <laughs> All right. I better refer to my notes. But in episode two, there was a great jingle at the beginning of the episode. Yes. 
We should just do that again. It's a French, uh, not a French, Indian. It was Indian. No, it wasn't. It was <laughs> Nina Simone. <laughs> dude, <laughs> what are you talking about? Dude? Later, it came later on, on a French, Which now an Indian. <laughs> How do I have French in the brain? Because I still picture you at 7 a.m. with a bunch of like, oh, we, oh, it's so fucking, <laughs> it's so fucking great. Right? And with their shirts. Oh, like, and, and like, with their shirts. <laughs> like they always, their shirts always like fucking, their collars come up oh, and everything. Oh, the collars have to go up <laughs> really the, high. And their buttons like all <laughs> get all rusty. Dis- disappear. <laughs> it's what happens, dude. Was fucking. this all guys? Was this no, no, no. Then there was, there's <laughs> Brazilian Japanese, there was Mexicans, there were... I don't think there were any Japanese that evening. Yeah, because they're too sensible. (laughs) They were were serving us drinks going, these fucking crazies. (laughs) Yeah, right? Yeah, because last time, when I drove down to the studio, last recording session, episode two... (laughs) I was listening to... Not this, though. Let me pause that. I was listening to another Indian song because yeah. I, when I drive down here, there's an Indian channel I put on. Last time I was trying to get news because there was reports of bombings. I didn't remember yeah, the Facebook exactly. thing, whatever. Exactly. I didn't have any weird Facebook notifications this morning indicating some sort of terrorist attack. But I was like, I still put on the Indian channel. Oh, so you, you listen to that channel often? Well, when I want to get in the mood. Okay. <laughs> Like what sort of mood, what is mood? That? that's the, the, the question <laughs> what mood do you have in mind? I mean like the mood where I want to I want to kind of party <laughs> but with a certain depth to the soul like a there's a certain spirituality to it but yet it's still a party a spirituality party I got it I got it at did 9 a.m. in the morning. Did I explain myself yeah, at all? Yeah, I got, I got to just go with it. Yeah, I was like 10, I and it. I'm cruising. And because we're in That's Singapore. Great. Did we make that clear last time? <laughs> um, we're in Singapore, and the radio, not so good. And I can't play music on my phone because I got Google Maps, so I don't get lost. And I don't want to have music coming through my phone and Google Maps coming through the phone. And then the music, and the, it was too much. So I put the radio on. And there's not many good channels, but I have the Indian old school Bollywood soundtrack. So right. you feel like you're going into an Indian restaurant, like in Brilliant. Lower East Side, like in New York or something. That's what it reminds oh, me of. It's awesome. Because it's that kind of stuff. And it's always had, you know, it's always a very... It's got a vibe. It's got a vibe. There's yeah. a certain uh, joy of life. Really? Joie de vivre. Can I say that? Vivre. Yes, of course. Yes. You don't think so? Because it's like... A, it dun, does, dun, yeah, dun, dun, I don't think I've ever listened to it proactively, like Indian music. Yeah, well, that's that's me, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. Okay, it's that's enough. Good. It's really good. <laughs> it gets me in the mood. Now I'm in the mood. Excellent. All right, what were you saying? Show notes, show notes. Oh, my God. Have we mentioned anything in the show notes? So we got a lot of good stuff here. We are going to do a continuation of our segment called What's the Deal? But that will be coming up later in the show. Oh, yes. What's the Deal? You could write into us via the Instagrams, via the Twitters, the Facebook pages. Like us on Facebook. Uh, what else? YouTube. Uh, you can the comment YouTubes. on the YouTube channels. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. <laughs> and then you could ask us a question. You just have to hashtag What's the Deal at Double Confirm Show. And we will do our best to try to answer it or at least make up something that's vaguely credible. And, you know, <laughs> and by the way, I have no lie. idea what this question was, but apparently it came through Facebook. It came through Facebook. Okay, so I'm just going to wing it. But oh, we're not doing that. That's coming up right. later in our show. we got to <laughs> first finish our report from Japan. So you got drunk. <laughs> that's it. That's the whole thing. The air is fresh. Your body's so polluted. <laughs> Soiled. <laughs> <laughs> all I could That's think it. about the whole trip was fuck I need to get my head of yoga like I need I need Banu in my life that whole week because I had three sessions of Banu the week before so I was just like how am I going to get this I actually was, I went online to try and see if I could do some poses mm. but Poser. it's never the same it's never the same dude well you're still actually quite same. new I am even if you've done um, yoga for years like typical yoga. Yeah. And, uh, this is uh, uh, different. Iyengar, and it's like, the, you know, he's... But oh, he's good. He's very good. He's very yeah. good. He knows his stuff, cares. We won't talk about yoga the entire 60 <laughs> minutes. Uh, but it is very good. And I'll tell you, honestly, when I'm doing it regularly, I have less of a desire to drink and stuff like that yeah. because I know how it's going to adversely affect the yoga next 
day or whenever I go next. Because I've tried that. I've tried, I did the drinking, and the next day I'm trying to do it. And I'm like, wow. That's why I went off the rails on I Friday. Feel shit. Yeah. Brian was not around, man. You know, you can't blame it on him, though. <laughs> you gotta take responsibility for your alcoholism. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yeah. Sir. So, yes, this morning, walking to the studio, beautiful Saturday morning in Singapore. I walk through a chemical bath. <laughs> You walk through the same chemical bath. Has men suits taking out the mosquitoes. We got big mosquitoes. Oh, were they in mosquitoes? Singapore. I thought they were just, I don't know, general pesticides for all pests, <laughs> including humans. You know, human aside. So just to picture those guys, we had two hazmat guys in hazmat suits hazmat. outside the entrance of the building. Yeah. Spraying R- right by the randomly. Entrance. Spraying on bushes and shrubs and plants. Really? And, I thought they were just spraying everything. Oh, well, they were on the shrubs. <laughs> okay. Can I say that? Can I say shrubbery? Yeah, they were on the shrubs at this point, and they were looking at me like, whoa, dude, get the f*** out of here. <laughs> we got masks on. We got the hazmat suits on. And I'm like, <gasps> He's I'm like short, trying to hold my shorts, breath. Shorts and a T-shirt. <laughs> shorts and a T-shirt and a backpack. But I didn't, I didn't think I was going into a chemical warfare zone. Jeez. I thought it was safe. Yeah, it was pretty intense. But I did. I picked up my pace. And <laughs> I was like... <laughs> and I even... Deep breath. I, ex- I, made, I, I think I exclaimed a, a swear word. Did I, you swear? I, I explitived oh, at God. them. Or at the general air. <laughs> even after the the listening to Bollywood music on the way in, I getting was in, in a yeah. good mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the <laughs> Indians. It's, all right, cool. So we walked through the hazmats. That was great. Um... I do not recommend it, <clears throat> but we, we think we'll live. Uh, what else is coming up? We got International Workers' Day coming up. Really? May 1st. Really? Do you know what that is? That's next week. <laughs> <laughs> that's next week? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's Monday. That's right. Oh, is that why we got a public holiday on Monday? Yeah. Oh. Wow. I thought it was like some, I don't know, I'm, this is going to sound bad, I thought it was some Indian holiday. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. So I thought it was like Vesak Day or something like just, that. You just, you know, it's just ignorance, man. There's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> May Day, but that's the first, that's May Day. May Day, otherwise known as May Day in other parts of the country. But did, wasn't that for the war? Boom, 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 boom. Wasn't um, May Day for the, like, the war? Wasn't it for the soldiers We're going to talk about May Day right now. Check it out, dude. All right. This is our, we're touching upon history. This will be quick. We'll do it in five minutes. Go. Uh, May 1st. International Workers' Day, otherwise known as May Day, otherwise known as Workers' Day, depending on where you are in the world, is a celebration of workers. The funny thing is, in the United States, there is none. They do not have this holiday. They it's don't only, celebrate workers. They celebrate, they have a Labor Day, but it's in September, and it's a completely, they removed it completely from <coughs> May Day, because May Day has communist overtones. Hold on, but isn't yeah, you don't May Day celebration of soldiers who liberated Europe? No. No. You're really? thinking you're thinking Anzac Day, which that, was Australia, Australia, New Zealand, which just happened <laughs> yeah, this yeah. past week. Anzac Day, which has to do with World War One, celebrating, you know, like Gallipoli and okay. people dying terribly. And um, but you're talking about like Memorial Day? In the US it would be called Memorial Day. Maybe. Uh, that celebrates like war. <laughs> dead people who died in wars to protect Sorry, our freedoms it's not funny guys it isn't funny it's just funny that please Kim Jong-un can you just control exactly. yourself dude well it's tough man we don't want any of that you got, we're going into political now so it's like you got two saber rattlers oh, you got the Trumpy saber rattler you got the the Kim <laughs> saber rattler smaller saber 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 <laughs> but it's still rattling and it doesn't matter it can still kill you so um, it's mini not, me. It's mini not me the, rattler. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Can you imagine that shit? I mean, Alaska it's will be not the wiped. size of the saber. It's how you rattle it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I start laughing to myself. All these weird things came in my head. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, of course it's terrible. Um, we watch the news. We don't want a war to start. I didn't watch the news. What happened? So yesterday he <laughs> <laughs> news. So hold on. Yesterday You're too busy he, drinking. <laughs> Yesterday, he let loose a missile. What was this? Well, okay, cool. So we're talking about some current events. Boom. Uh, <laughs> Don't use that word, dude. <laughs> I am. Which, who says boom? There's someone that's their tag like, name. Kim Jong-un. <laughs> oh, jeez. Sorry. I was thinking more like, 
uh, catchphrase. Okay. You know, like booyah, oh, yeah, booyah right. kasha, this is boom. like bam. Like they have all these different people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Like Kawabunga. Kawabunga. That's yeah. a classic from The yeah. Simpsons. Exactly. Well, this is, we could do a whole episode. There's on actually a new word. There's a great new word which all the millennials are using. What's that? Lit. Have you heard it used before? <laughs> Just once. <laughs> right lit. now. Like when stuff is lit. Oh, like lit up, like uh, like smoking so much you're lit. No, no, as in like it's cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like it's thing. hyper cool. Like that coffee is lit. How do you spell that? L I T. There's a great Simple. video on YouTube that talks about this. It's hilarious. I'll send it to you later. Yeah, this is for our millennials out there. Yeah. We are millennials, by the way. It's something new. Yeah, they... Are we millennials? <sighs> Why do I have hair Dude. on Dude. <laughs> you got hair in your water? You are effed up. Keeping it clean for <laughs> our... <laughs> Sorry, guys. For our young 10-year-old demographic. They love the show. Who wants to talk so about So we're stuff? talking about May Day. Do we want to? It's a holiday... It's really interesting, actually. <laughs> it, it, I'm the history buff, so it's really interesting because May Day, which the origins, if I'm not mistaken, this I'm pulling out of my brain socket right now, <laughs> pulling away, out, going deep. I think the origins of the history of May Day actually were from something that happened in the United States, but it was like workers. We're talking about like the 1860s or 70s or like long time okay. ago <laughs> before. World War One before the World War before before nineteen before the Russo Russo Japanese War way back before the Spanish American War before I'm I'm trying to remember I'm trying to remember, <laughs> think of really like, esoteric before, before Christ no it was after Christ <laughs> okay. I got that far okay quick so labor I think it was some sort of labor dispute and there was you know of course you know the government came down hard on them probably shot everybody you know <sighs> probably some sort of slaughter of workers. There's been a lot of crazy stuff that happens. People yeah, think man. crazy stuff happening now. It's been happening always. Anyway, uh, so what happened? So so there was some commemoration of those workers that like suffered and it was like celebrating the workers and it became May Day, but then it got wrapped up with more socialist movements. It's uh, so, like supporting the workers against the, the owners of capital and the proletariats <laughs> and the bourgeoisies, <laughs> which is which? The Frenchies. <laughs> the proletariats are the workers. And then, anyway, so it was like, you know, so then it had more socialist overtones, mm. communist overtones, because later on, well, a couple decades later, when you got Lenin, not not John Lennon, you got Vladimir Lenin coming in, fucking Bolshevik Vladimir revolution. Vladimir Lenin? Are you sure it's, it's Vladimir Putin, bro? <laughs> 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 Who was his first name? Vladimir as well? Iliad. <laughs> Lenin. That's like the quintessential <laughs> dictator name in that case. <laughs> Vladimir Putin. Maybe he doesn't have a first name. No, he does. I think it's like it's like, it's Iliad, like J-Lo. Iliad. It's like one of these <laughs> Iliad, Iliad's, Iliad's, yeah, Iliad's. He was so cool. He had like one name. They all called him beard. Lenin. He had a great beard. Great beard. Yes. He was, the, he was <laughs> definitely the first hipster. Yeah, man. Totally. Yeah. He didn't want to work. Um, <laughs> grew a very cool beard. Um, wrote a lot. Rebelled. Rebelled. Like, I mean, really rebelled. Yeah. Agreed. Burning people, burning their fucking castles Jesus. down. But yeah, anyway, we're going way back for our, our history buff listeners out there. The 10-year-old demographics. They love this stuff. So what happened? Yeah, so anyway, Lenin, I'll just wrap it up real quick. He's like, oh, yeah. He's like, we need to have some holidays and stuff. So they kind of attached, attached or latched on, I should say, to this holiday that was kind of about workers. And they, they rose it up as a celebration of workers in general, workers of the world. You must unite. And hold on, hold on, hold on. Just so I get this clear. So you're telling me that Lenin started Labor Day? Or was this like a movement, a global movement? It was already kind of something, a kind of commemoration that was out there. Okay, gotcha. But he kind of latched onto it and and, oh. and became something. And so May first, in the communist regime of really? Soviet Union, they would have their, they have big parades yeah. and they go marching and goose stepping and you know, yeah. you know, you know what, you yeah. know what tyrants showing showing missiles. Yeah, showing missiles. <laughs> Everyone in lockstep. <laughs> exactly. You know, no one's out of, yeah. no one's they individual. shoot you if you're out of, out they of shoot line. shoot you, give you an individual <laughs> bullet in the head. <laughs> Terrible. But anyway, so then it became more wrapped up in the whole communist thing, you know. And then, so in the United States, they didn't celebrate it because of the Got whole, you. so there is, there is no, like, official 
May Day Workers. celebration that's <clears throat> recognized by the U.S. However, there are groups of people who still do May Day type celebration, but those are also connected with like way before the workers stuff, like going back centuries wow. into England and where you'd have people dressed up in... Oh, dude, it reminds me of something. <laughs> was it just last year? I was in New York City, and it was May 1st, and it was a Saturday. It was a weekend, because I remember, and I kind of got up really early, because I was jet-lagged. I think I had, mm. Was I jet-lagged? I don't know. But I was getting up really early. I was up at, like, a sunrise. Yeah. And I went for a jog in the park nearby. Best was, way to get over. Uh, it is good. Over <laughs> jet lag. <laughs> and, and hangover if you can. Uh, mm, mm, no. Depends how. Don't like vomiting in the morning. <laughs> well, you want to take it easy. A light jog. Not a hard run, I would recommend. And lots of water. But anyway, I remember going out and there were a bunch of like crazy white guys. This is in the Upper, East, Upper West Side, Manhattan, along Riverside Park. I was there nearby, went jogging, and I heard some drums beating. At sunrise. It was like around, right around dawn. Like, and like uh, bells. What? Like Christmas bells. Shing, 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 shing. This is what we add in the sounds. <laughs> to the video, or audio. It will be video eventually. Shing, shing. And I was like, what the heck is that? And then I saw some people dressed in like black and white clothing, hopping around on the path in the park. Pagan ritual. Pagan ritual. <laughs> Thank you Pagan way. ritual. <laughs> I think I remember you telling me this story. But I have I a video of what it. happened. I videotaped it. We'll put it up. Oh, shit. We'll put I it up I, on YouTube. And then when I upgraded my Mac OS, oh. my iPhoto oh. got locked up, and I'm still trying to get stuck. It's stu- another what the deal, dude. Oh. I've got a what the deal. Okay. I don't, want to, I don't want to take the what's the deal. So... I'm just going to put what the, we do what's the deal later but what the fuck is going on with Apple products guys <laughs> Tim Cook please the spawn of please. the dead of please it's not that bad I mean there's notifications coming up I have to put my iCloud password in every day twice a day this is our segment what's the deal we had a what's the deal coming from Eric oh come Eric D. on I'm a second rant today what's I mean like second seriously round. And to just get these two mics set up on the Mac? I got it. I know, you, but how long did that take us? Oh. <laughs> it took us forever. Well, no, it took garage us. Garage band. We never got it done when we tried exactly. to do it. But as soon as I spent half an hour by myself, <laughs> <laughs> then I was able to do it. Then yeah. I was able to do it. That all it took half It took about 25 minutes. Damn it. And uh, <laughs> my point my still time. stands for, my time. for Apple, though. So what else? Great movie I saw. What else? Which what what, what what movie? Great movie. What was it? <laughs> what we do in the shadows. Interesting. That's that's a great title Have for movie. Have you heard of this title? Have you heard of this movie? Because I do some crazy shit in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> this is the real shit. What kind of shit are we talking about? Here? Controversial. Dude, all sorts of shit. It's when the sun comes out that it's a problem. <laughs> Maybe you should be um, speaking. Maybe you should, you should have a pseudonym. <laughs> We're gonna be hiding your identity. Do we have to hide your identity? No, we could. We could add. We I could mean, bring in a guest. <laughs> you know, disguise your voice. I mean, we're already all over the Facebooks and the Facebook? Instagrams. Like we're dead in the water, dude. I don't know what you're talking. We about. haven't had any haters yet, though. I can't wait for our first troll. Why you so? Why you want that? I don't want I don't that, know, dude. I think it will be entertaining. I don't like it. Sometimes bad publicity is a good thing. All right. Well, you're the marketing guy. <laughs> the branding marketing genius. Because he's been doing such a fantastic job. <laughs> no, I haven't. To date. I haven't. I haven't. I he's haven't. been AWOL. Pauline was so bleak. <laughs> oh, yeah. My wife, Pauline, already asked me to fire you. <laughs> oh, my God. I need this feedback. You need to tell me what I, I screwed up on the date. But she's, she's, she's and excessive. And the time. <laughs> she's exaggerates and excessive and like... You got to take it with a big grain of Love salt, it. like a Love really it. heavy, yeah. large grain. Agreed. All right, we're introducing a new segment on the show. Yes, yes. <laughs> someone you should know. Okay. Someone you should know. We're still working on that. Okay. I first was saying someone you should really know, <laughs> but it's kind of long. Okay. But the really is kind of and important. What do we mean by like knowing? All right, it's a, it, like it's a to... part of the show. Okay. I got my notes here, where we <laughs> celebrate someone who is. Who is not in the limelight, but is doing something special, mm. something noteworthy, mm. s- et cetera. Something good. Something different. Something different. And mm. it's up to us to judge that. 
Oh, we're gonna be ju- <laughs> we're judging. We're it. gonna be judging people, basically. Not judging <laughs> people. Okay. Not judging people, but just picking people uh, based on what they're doing and saying. And if we think it's something special, that we should shine a light on. Okay. We're we're celebrating them. So it's what, it's on what they're doing. We're not judging them. It's about what they're doing. Exactly. Okay. It's not about the person. It's about the actions. <laughs> Completely. So we already spoke about Apple earlier on. Yeah. So we, we won't judge Tim. Oh, what's going on Do there? Do you want to finish your Apple rant? No, no, I'm, I'm going to our I'm d- I'm new good. segment called <laughs> so who's, Someone You Should so who's Really Know. Who's all right. Do you have somebody in I mind? I do. I do have someone in mind. All right, this week, all right, I came to know a guy, a fellow named Taika Waititi. Hawaiian. Maori. It's Maori. Oh, he's he's nice. mixed Maori. I like New Zealanders. <laughs> Taika Waititi. All right. He's a filmmaker. Actor, painter, comedian from New Zealand. We like New Zealanders. Big fans of Kiwis. Yeah. The people and the fruits. And All right. The, and so, the birds. And the birdies. <laughs> the flightless birds, which are so darn cute. Did you ever see one for real life? One thing. For real life. I thought, I thought they were. In real life. They are I, not extinct. They're not extinct? No. Are you sure? Oh, that's I am Dodo. Sure. Dodo birds dead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Dead extinct. So this guy d- does a lot of stuff. Yeah, I man. Mean, it's like, He's does like he do, us. Does he do pottery as well? No, <laughs> not that I know of. How did you come across right. this guy? <laughs> okay, so funny thing is, he's a filmmaker, right? So I've heard of some of his films, and maybe you have too. So one of the names, I already mentioned the one film, which is uh, What We Do in the Shadows. Yep. Which is, we'll tell you about that in a second. Great title. But a more recent film, which is a bit more well-known, um, is called Hunt for the Wilder People, or Wilder People. Hunt for the Wilder People. I did hear about it. You may have heard about that. Because I remember hearing about it last year in the movies, trailer playing. We were going to see, I don't know what we're seeing. And and I was like, oh, this is kind of an offbeat comedy mm. kind of thing. It's kind of like, it's odd. I didn't see it. They're in the mountains. They're being chased by people. So it's like it's a like Baz Luhrmann type comedy It's like a chubby style? young kid and an older dude who's kind of... Somehow he's forced to, to be responsible for this kid, and but he doesn't want to be. And he's like, "Don't call me uncle," and he's you know, curmudgeonly, curmudgeon. And um, anyway, but that just came out last year, Hunt for the Wilder People. Yeah, but I got, I haven't seen. I that. need to see it. Plain so movie, plain I, yeah. movie. So I remember seeing those trailers, which were pretty cool. Um, but then I proceeded to forget about it completely. <laughs> but you saw Until what we do in the shadows this week. This okay. week, and the reason why I saw it—that's a funny thing. It was on a thumb drive. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you just put it in here. Like, oh, I needed to scan something, and I <laughs> stuck a thumb drive into our per- scanner. I didn't scan through my phone or something. I don't know why. Even that, I just had it. I'm like, and I never use thumb drives often, as no one does. But I was using it, and I was like, I'm like, oh, I put it in my computer, and I'm like, oh, there's a film on here. Awesome. I'm, and I, I put it on there. Long time ago. Oh, really? I must have. It okay. was my thumb drive. Okay. And I'm like, oh, wow. I vaguely recall somehow getting my hands on this. Someone must have recommended it. And I can't remember. It's kind of like it's kind of like that book. Got I was it. like, who recommended this? Was it Bill Clinton again? Maybe it was Bill Clinton he recommended it. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it might have been and when I was back in New York. I think maybe it was some friend of mine was telling about it. I don't know. Whatever. Good anyway. Movie. Is it a good movie? It's a good movie. Really? It's called What We Do in the Shadows. And here, I'm going to read it in my notes here. It's a mockumentary about a group of vampires who are roommates, flatmates, living in Wellington, New Zealand. It's a mockumentary, kind of a dry comedy, New Zealand satire, whatever. And and I'll give you a little bit more. Okay, so Taika, he's the director. He also plays one of the vampires. He's a comedian. Comedian, actor, filmmaker, filmmaker, director, painter, not pottery. (laughs) But New Zealanders don't really have a very strong sense of humor. No? You just offended an entire No, they're pretty nation. serious. They're serious people, man. they got a good sense of humor. Dry, really? sarcastic. Because mm, whenever it's I think dry. New Zealand, whenever I think New Zealand, I think wine farms, rugby, sheep, farms. sheep, and black. Sorry. That's what I think. Black, black as in like black color. Their national color is black. Yeah, well, the team. <laughs> Sorry, I'm the not The soccer, <laughs> the football team. And the rugby team. Rugby team. And there's the no all blacks. humor in those in They're that imagery. There's no. There's, hmm. It's very. <laughs> so I've never actually thought of New Zealand as being very humorous. Interesting. Anyway, um, but I want to see this. I want to see New Zealand humor. Have you spent much? 
you know, years ago. I know a lot of New Zealanders, but I I've had, never spent time in New Zealand. I had this, I had the, one of my previous lives, I am part vampire, one of my previous lives, I hung out, I spent three months in New Zealand, right after university. Yeah. I had work visa, I worked half the time, like in Auckland, at some cafe, coffee shop. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So Good like, coffee. Thank you. And <laughs> so I worked half the time. I earned some New Zealand dollars. I mean, this is like early. This is just after university. So what am I, 20, what, three years old, I guess? Whoa, 22, dude. 23. What did they have in Auckland then? Right? <laughs> <laughs> just two Auck- coffee shops. Auckland, <laughs> Auckland is the biggest city in New Zealand. However, yeah. it's not really the best place in New Zealand. Mm. But yeah, like I said, half the time in New Zealand, half the time in Auckland, saved up my Aussie, do- uh, Auckland, Australia, no, New, Zealand dollars, New Zealand dollars, and then I spent that money traveling around the rest of the country, the South Island, whatever, mm. whatever. So I was there, you know, and I was working with Kiwis, you know, yeah, and yeah. It's the very dry, really? very dry humor, like cool. very like if you're not paying attention, you, you wouldn't You'll even miss it. you wouldn't know it was being so funny. I haven't actually, I just wasn't paying attention. But I thought South Africans were a bit dry humor too. Really? But not as dry as New Zealand. It's even drier. <laughs> Dry. <laughs> so dry. It's almost not humor. And then the Australians we won't even bring into this yeah, conversation. Let's not complicate the matter. <laughs> They're, you know, descended from slaves. It's a different thing. This is fantastic. This guy sounds very oh, interesting. Yeah, I'm I still in the segment. I want to see the rest of the movie. All right, movie. cool. So, yeah, okay, great. Taika. Taika. Waititi. 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 Really cool guy. You know, he's got the TED Talks I found out. I mean, really? after I saw the movie, I'm like, who is this fellow? I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> so I Googled it, and then the Google came up, and I was like, there was like a little TED Talk, you know, like a 10-minute little thing, nice. and I, so like, I watched him. I'm like, huh. He's not like an old dude. No. <laughs> I'm joking. Age is just a number. I agree. It's I've, all up here. I've met 60-year-olds who are like younger than 20-year-olds who are older than 80-year-olds, which are younger than 10-year-olds, which are older than... I would be than. over 50 and be doing yoga still. Dude. Definitely. Okay, speaking of that, yoga. It keeps you young, dude. Dude. Okay, this week I met up with my trainer, Simon, who is a Kiwi. Yeah, you're right. For my weekly, once a week, one hour, intense fucking gym fucking workout thing. (laughs) Just do it. That's all I need. So my man, Simon, he said, he's like, oh, check this thing out on like BBC Instagram video thingy, whatever. And he's like, this 98-year-old... Yoga instructor in the south of India, this, uh, you know, grandmother, 98, fucking yoga instructor. Wow. Did I just repeat myself? <laughs> um, and it has video of her, like, doing some, I don't know, like, some yoga things, stretching and stuff. 98, and then has a picture of her, and she's, like, talking, and she's, like, she's chilling. And Simon is there, like, yeah, she looks pretty good for 98. I'm like, she's good for 98? <laughs> she looks good for, like, 58, or, like, I mean... What are like forty eight? Awesome. You know, like, I'm sure awesome. she's a bit wrinkly, but she's smiling and she's stretching and and she's 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 a, she's, a, she's a yoga instructor, <sighs> ninety eight yoga instructor. Done. Imagine ten years from now, sold. She's gonna be a hundred eight. Yeah, doing a downward frog. So you the... could be like her too. <laughs> was my point. <laughs> Done. Because okay. that's my goal, dude. I need to stop on the Friday evening. Uh, yeah, I know. That's the thing. But that's, that's my killing no. Us. I my goal is like one hundred and twenty years minimum. Really? Yeah. Wow. One twenty. Cryogenic, not cryogenically. <laughs> Biology might get us there, dude. Science, 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 science dude. Science, the mind. Science. <laughs> what was it? Someone you should really know. Yeah. So Taika Waititi, mm-hmm. really interesting fellow. Um, like I mentioned, those movies, and he teamed up with one of the guys from Flight of the Concords, which I know you know because mm, they—that's the humor, that's that style of humor. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah, Flight of the Concords. So the two guys from Flight of the Concords, one of them's named Jermaine something. He kind of teamed up with Taika, and they did that movie together. They do a lot of stuff, I think, together. Like, but it's comedy. It's, Very cool. It's, but it was really. You know, it's odd, oddball, you know, apps, you know, whatever. It's funny. Awesome. But it's so funny to see it. And can I you share that thumb, di- thumb drive? Just put it on s- Google Drive or something? Because <laughs> br- nobody uses thumb drives anymore. I know. I think my would laptop I be, would be Would I be breaking a copyright law? Whoopsie. Uh, <laughs> oh shit! So we gonna have to delete that whole segment. <laughs> Whoopsie! Whoopsie! I didn't put it on the thumb drive. It was it placed <laughs> on the thumb drive by an unknown source. Source many years ago. They've, Previously, they've got the certificate. 
certificate of what? <laughs> I don't know. Licensing. Licensing certificate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know, forget everything I just said. <laughs> <laughs> just forget it. All right. Really. Anyway, I recommend so check I, them out. I think we should we should move to the second segment of What's the Deal? Because right. I'm super excited. Okay, so we're going to do a What's the Deal segment. There was this, and apparently we're it was in. posted on Facebook. So this is a segment where you could write in, ask us questions, hashtag What's the Deal? We try our best. We, you know, we're not, we're just human. <laughs> <laughs> not perfect. Anyway, but Arthur M. writes in on our Facebook page. Arthur M. from New York, thank you. you for you're not going to give the full name? Well, I want to protect the privacy of our, I mean, Arthur but isn't M. But is our Facebook page public? But you have to be... You have to go find it. Okay, sorry. I don't sorry know, for, man. Okay. I don't <laughs> okay. know. Arthur M., got it. Totally we, we might delete this. T- <laughs> broke my stride. <laughs> sorry, keep going, That's, keep going. Uh, Arthur M. Break my stride. <laughs> He says, quote, can someone, meaning you, Merrick, please explain to me what a DJ does? I know you're the perfect guy for this. He goes on to say, the kind that sell out big arenas. They look cool. I just don't get what they are doing. Oh, my like, God. What is their creative art that they are performing live? Hashtag what's the deal at Double Confirm Show. And I need to give you a little more background. Arthur M. is a musician. He's a pianist piano oh, professional really? pianist so he's coming from performer background he's been performing he's oh been man it's amateur out here <laughs> i want to start I'm joking. I'm joking. softball i know what the answer is no okay i respect the fact that arthur is a musician so we could get straight into it i mean the reality is djs exactly okay so you got two types of djs you got paris hilton <laughs> He's not a fucking Person DJ. Type. Okay. So he might be thinking DJ. about those types. Yeah, no, I think okay. that messes people's Okay. So that we viewpoint. can you know, that we can scratch immediately. I mean that is that is that is pure marketing. Mm. It's usually pre recorded music. Mm. Um, it's already pre mixed. So a lot of these equipment that they use nowadays, you know, you don't even need to add any songs. It's already all pre programmed. Press a button. Press a button. Boom. Perform a little bit, you know. Shake your booty. <laughs> Shake your booty Boot. a little bit. Hey. A lot of lights, a lot of sound. It's all good, yeah? Mm. That is not even, in my opinion, DJing. That is... However, I think a lot of people who are un- uninitiated, they get thrown off the scent. They mm. see that and they're like, what's this all about? Yeah, it's terrible. But I hear Just you. Just don't go to those shows. Don't even go to those it's shows. It's, it's a waste of Hashtag time. Hashtag Now, you know a lot about... You, you know what, what DJ stands for. Yo, disc jockey. Exactly. And you know where that came from? Yo, radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little bit of radio, but the, what they used to do is vinyls. Exactly. So this was back in the day. This was when, I mean, Ancient what was it, history. 1980s? Mm. I think it was. When hip hop was coming around. Hip-hop. So they were actually manually mixing vinyls and mm. doing sampling, live sampling of, of sound. Exactly. So this was before electronics and digital sort of music. Two turntables and a microphone. Exactly, exactly. But, I mean, these guys were genius. Uh, who's the guy from uh, the guy from Fresh Prince? Not Fresh Prince, not uh, <laughs> the other guy, the DJ guy from Fresh Prince. Jazzy Jeff. Jazzy. Genius behind the two That's decks. Good. The guys, it was absolutely amazing. And he's probably one of the most commercial of them all. But they, were, they were absolute geniuses that True. could sample live tracks with vinyl. Exactly. Now, what's happened, so that's where the disc jockey concept came around. Mm-hmm. Yeah? And they would play in clubs. They would, they would mix tracks depending on the sound of the vibe of the club, <laughs> vibe of the restaurant. Exactly. By the way, the club we were at in Tokyo, they were doing vinyl mixing. Of course. It's an works. art Japanese, form. Japanese, dude. It's an absolute art form because you have to get the needle exactly right. You've got to hear yeah, the sounds. It is, it is an art. Can I say artisanal? Artisanal. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that. <laughs> Done. At least it's once. It's very hipster nowadays to be able to mix tracks on a, on a vinyl. Oh, yeah. Very exactly. hipster. Very yeah, hipster. sure, sure. Um, and then what happened is electronic, mm. the digital music came about. Exactly. Yeah? exactly. So now you didn't have a vinyl anymore. You had CDs. Mm. With CDs, you, you were able to start to actually manipulate the sound even more. Mm-hmm. And you were actually, actually able to capture the music and actually look at the different, what do you call it? Levels. 
sound levels. Again, I'm not a musician. That's I'm just true. a little bit in the industry. <laughs> and yeah. you were able to very quickly mix those two sounds together so that there was no break. Right on. So it was much easier <clears> to start <throat> mixing mixing tracks. Cool. Yeah. So nowadays, it's a lot easier, but it's still an art form on selecting the right track True. and making sure that you understand the audience that you're playing to. Exactly. So there is a bit of art there. Absolutely. But I'll go on to a bit of a tangent as well. So good DJs, and as a producer, Arthur M would understand that, yeah. they produce music. Yeah, that's the big thing. They, play a lo- they produce a lot of their own music. So I got this what's the deal, I think. You did? I did. I knew it was right in your wheelhouse. <laughs> there's wheelhouse. definitely there are, there's definitely a skill involved in that. Yeah, because I know you like to go to those electronica shows, <laughs> the rave fests. The drug infused, right? <laughs> no, not anymore. I can't do that anymore. Like the the alcohol nowadays. <laughs> yeah, but no, no. It's I, I. mean, I'm absolutely passionate about electronic music. I know you are, man. I love it. So, I'm a big fan of electronic. Unfortunately, yeah. these commercial DJs have destroyed. Who's the other guy? David Guetta. I mean, they've destroyed the whole art form of of DJing. And being an electronic musician. I don't know David David Guetta. It's a French oh, yeah, it's a French guy who commercialized himself and massive, massive artist. Huge, huge, huge. But he, again, he he was caught pressing buttons behind the DJ decks and you know and not mixing and you know, it's just like <laughs> come on, dude. It's like a pre-recorded and yeah. you just say play. Yeah, with the oh, long button, hair button, and the button, earphones button. and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just like come on, dude, please. Mm. So I, I've got something there that you know it's you can't do that guys please please don't destroy good electronic music <laughs> well there's going to be good and there's going to be bad you're right there always is and there's going to be ugly <laughs> but what's your opinion on this I agree <laughs> <laughs> with everything you said New, it, New York was it, a hotbed of that yeah man back Ord, in the day Ord Studio Ord. 54 where they were mixing they were mixing tracks they were bringing out that fresh music it was it was again it was you an art form DJ Oh, I'd love so to. Fresh. Love to. And then, and then you got grime coming out now in London, where they're doing, they're okay. bringing all of that back. It's amazing. All right, I'm going to ask you a question since I didn't participate. Skrillex. Yes. I mean, he's big and has been big. Yes. In that scene. Yes. Where does he fall on the spectrum? He's a fantastic composer. Fantastic. He produces composer. all of he his. He produces music. a lot. Yeah. So he's got incredible sound, but what he's also done is he's packaged his brand Mm -hmm. really well but everyone (laughs) debates you know is he really that good like because obviously you know he's commercialized himself and there's always this debate with the hipsters oh he's too commercial commercial. well there's always gonna be a group that it's too commercial yeah yeah so come check out our social media handles um this is the third episode you got much better sound thank you compared to the second episode um, so great. We're going to edit this and get it out pretty soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like us on the Facebooks. Follow us on the Instagram, The SoundClouds. But it's available everywhere. And the YouTube channel. Exactly. Because eventually, once we figure this out, <laughs> we're going video. We're going, going live. live. That was stereo. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Awesome.